Hello, and welcome to this pre-recorded presentation of my PQ Crypto 2022 article, 2F, A New Method for Constructing Efficient Multivariate Encryption Schemes, presented by myself, Daniel Smith Tone. As the title suggests, this work endeavors to create a new mechanism for building efficient multivariate crypto systems. Like some of my recent work, this thought experiment hopes to secure multivariate systems from the most common attacks, in particular MinRank attacks, while maintaining some method for efficient inversion. First, we recall the basic objective of multivariate cryptanalysis. That is the problem of solving a system of usually quadratic equations. The complexity of this task depends on the structure of the system of equations. The most general approach is to directly solve the system of equations with some algorithm such as F4 or XL. Which is more efficient depends on many variables. Typically we see that the complexity of solving the system is related to the homogeneous quadratic component, possibly in conjunction with field equations, that force the solution to lie in the given field and not in an extension. For small fields, it is sometimes useful to guess the values of some variables before trying to solve the system. This technique is called the hybrid approach. If we assume the system to be semi-regular, which essentially means that non-trivial relations arise in the calculation at the last possible moment, then we can approximate the solving degree by computing the first non-positive exponent of the Hilbert series shown here. Another attack technique that has broken several multivariate schemes, some of which are shown here, is to use the discrete differential to look for symmetries or invariants. Here and in the paper I will only examine symmetries, but the analysis of invariants is analogous. The idea of attacks exploiting differential symmetry is that some linear actions on the inputs of the differential can leave the linear span of the output of the differential invariant. We can represent this idea in the case of a symmetric linear action on the inputs with the equation shown here. When such a symmetry exists, there are efficient means of recovering the linear map L, which can reveal information about the hidden structures of the scheme. The third main class of attack on multivariate schemes is the rank attack family. There are a few types of rank attack, but the most applicable in multivariate cryptography is the min rank attack. Generically, the min rank problem is the problem, when given k s by t matrices over a field f, of finding non-zero linear combinations of the matrices with coefficients in an extension e of f such that the rank is bounded by some value r. A common scenario is when the extension degree is 1 for e over f. But for min-rank attacks on the so-called big field schemes, such as the attack that breaks uh, gems, the degree of the extension is much larger. As a target for our discussion of cryptanalysis and for use later, let us consider the square encryption scheme developed in the early 2000s. This is a big field scheme utilizing multiplication in an extension field to provide nonlinearity. With identification via the vector space isomorphism phi, we can realize the map f, which is just the squaring map, as a multivariate quadratic map over any field of characteristic other than 2. This map is 2 to 1, except at 0 of course, so we don't have unique inverses without some sort of redundancy in the inputs. Square uses an injection u to embed the n-dimensional plaintext space into an m-dimensional space. Square is interesting because we have learned over the years that there are so many lines of attack that can break the scheme. A result in 2019 on the cryptanalysis of eFlash implies that Square should have a low first fall degree and so is likely broken by the direct attack. Attacks like the one that broke KREC star can break Square either by recovering a linear perturbation on the input or on the output, so there are two different differential attacks. Uh, the big field min rank attack that was first used on HFE over 20 years ago can efficiently break square with either the miners or support miners modeling since the rank is so low. Also, the new min rank instance found by Tao and others that broke gems can also be used to break square with the same efficiency as the traditional big field min rank attack. Something that all of these cryptanalytic te techniques have in common is the importance linear maps play in their structure or complexity analysis. The significance is obvious for min rank and for attacks using differential symmetry, but more recent degree fall analysis of big field schemes relies on symmetries related to Frobenius automorphisms and so also rely on linear relations. I already introduced a nonlinear modifier last year with the Q modifier, but that modifier can't be used for encryption. 
So this time I'm wanting a structure for transforming a nonlinear system in a nonlinear way while preserving injectivity, more or less. To accomplish this, we can use modulus switching. In the diagram here, we have a multivariate map F that we assume to be efficiently invertible over a prime field. We can transform this from a map between Fp to the n and Fp to the m to a map between Fq to the n and Fq to the m for a larger prime Q by simply keeping all of the coefficients. Here I'm writing the inclusion arrow to mean that we may view our inputs as least residues modulo P, but all of the arithmetic is occurring modulo Q. We can then mask the structure of the map by composing it with an FQ linear perturbation map on the outputs, T. Here is an example of this construction with three variables and equations, and for now, ignoring the last linear transformation. I'll talk about that in a bit. Here we use P equals 7 and Q equals 331. Suppose that V represents the output of the hidden map after the modulus has switched to Q. Here I have some coefficients that were inherited from FP. We can choose some input values chosen as least residues modulo P and compute the new values of V. If we compute modulo P, we get something like these values as the least residues modulo P. However, if we compute modulo Q, we get these least residues modulo Q. The key thing here is that if we compute over the integers, we get these exact same values. That is to say, computing modulo Q doesn't involve adding or subtracting any multiple of Q. Of course, if we compose with some FQ linear map T, then the output might look like this. And since T is random, we should expect that the calculation of the values involves a great deal of adding and subtracting multiples of Q. This fact is exactly why using two prime fields of different characteristic works. It is easy to prove that if Q is sufficiently large, the inequality here is large enough to work, then we can find a preimage by applying T inverse, reducing modulo P, and then inverting F. Since you have a great many efficient but insecure multivariate schemes, we have a hope of creating something efficient as long as this modulus switching prevents attacks. Of course, this large value of Q ensures that there are no new decryption failures due to the 2F construction. In general, though, the distributions of outputs of quadratic functions are fairly tight, so usually much smaller Q can be used safely. In particular, it's not necessary to allow inputs to be any least residue modulo P. We could restrict to ternary inputs and have even tighter distributions. Then we can even choose a larger P and smaller Q and still expect a failure rate small enough to maintain a given security level. So let's examine how this construction affects attacks. The first thing to note is that instead of field equations, we have equations G of the form given here. These equations are degree P, so we end up with a Hilbert series just as we would for a multivariate system over the small field FP. If we insist on further restriction to ternary inputs, then we obtain the bottom Hilbert series. Of course, that is in the generic case. In the context of big field schemes for which we can derive low degree relations related to the Frobenius, this transformation is helpful since there is no FP or FQ linear map that can filter through both the characteristic P Frobenius and the characteristic Q output transformation T. Considering differential attacks, we note that the structure of a differential symmetry requires that the application of an FP linear map to the input produces an FP linear map on the output. However, since the output of P is transformed by an FQ linear map, for the attack to work we would need the alternating composition of FQ and FP linear maps to remain linear. They are not, so this style of attack simply breaks down. Considering rank attacks, the situation is similar. While it is true that if I use something like a stepwise triangular scheme without its output transformation as the central map, that rank structure is preserved. This is not the case in general. In particular, for big field schemes, we note that while there is a linear combination of the quadratic forms associated with the hidden central map, denoted here by H, with coefficients lying in a characteristic P extension field that produces a low rank matrix, the public key is an FQ linear combination of these same matrices with coefficients interpreted in FQ. So in fact, there is a linear combination over a characteristic P extension of FP of linear combinations over FQ that produce the low rank matrix. So min rank attacks don't work here over either characteristic. We don't get something for nothing though. 
While this modulus switching strategy thwarts the standard multivariate attacks, it adds structure to the key that has a lattice flavor. The simplest and most straightforward lattice attack is to note that the Macaulay matrix for the public key has the property that there are FQ linear combinations of the rows that are short vectors corresponding to the hidden central map. Given that P is very small compared to Q, the row space of the given matrix has peculiar short vectors. I provided an analysis of the complexity of recovering such a short vector by generic techniques in the paper, but in a discussion with Ray Perlner since acceptance, he showed me another lattice approach to cryptanalysis that is far better and breaks the parameters of the scheme I propose in the paper. I was more or less anticipating a better lattice analysis than I provide, which is why I pointed out the option of further restricting input values while allowing the parameters P and Q to vary more widely. In fact, you can tune the parameters to produce lattices in which the vectors revealing the hidden structure are not even among the shortest vectors in the lattice at all. After the fact, I can say that I probably should have stuck with that intuition because I didn't learn as much from the attack as I hope to learn from future cryptanalysis. In the article, I propose to use the 2f construction with square, making 2f square. The reasoning is that square has essentially all multivariate attack avenues open, so it provides the weakest possible target for testing this method. Ideally, someone will discover a new method of attack that helps us to further tune this construction and make practical schemes that can earn trust over several years of stability. Here I am presenting the performance data provided in the paper in comparison with other multivariate encryption schemes designed for similar security levels. As you can see, some of my code ran over a thousand times faster for decryption than the other schemes. I've overlaid the table with an image indicating broken to be sure that the message that these 2F schemes can't be used as is is clear. Although now that I think about it, maybe a person can interpret this as saying that ABC and PCM are broken, which they are not. Anyway, uh, this can still give a general sense of the type of performance such schemes will have. I have implemented versions of this scheme that are secure from all attacks I'm aware of, and decryption is still something like 30 to 40 times faster than the ABC and PCBM schemes. For example, decryption at NIST level 1 parameters costs something like 13 milliseconds as far as I can tell. So it is still a massive improvement and quite interesting. I believe that it is interesting to consider the performance profile of this scheme. It has really quite small ciphertext, quite large public keys, and still fairly slow decryption, even if it is many times faster than the best multivariate schemes. It's interesting to draw a comparison, I think, to schemes like Michaelis. Just as has been the goal with several of my recent projects, I'm hoping to build a structure that can be applied broadly to various schemes with various security and performance properties to make them resist the powerful attacks we have in multivariate cryptography. In particular, I want to avoid MinRank attacks that kill just about everything. Still, I think that the right route forward is to focus on modifying schemes that are particularly weak so that these modifiers and constructions can survive the toughest tests. I believe that there are still several avenues to explore in this direction, and hopefully we can learn more in both design and cryptanalysis. Thank you for staying until the end of my presentation, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.